All right. Hey, it's Mr. Whipple here. And we got a, tried this before. It didn't really work. It's kind of a mess. So I deleted it. We're going to try and do that N4 antebellum immigration together again. Uh, in the following questions, you will learn, uh, learn about the lives of immigrants to the United States during the years before the Civil War. Immigrants are people who move to a new country. Underline. It's an important word, immigrants, people who moved to a new country. Between the years 1840 and 1860, millions of immigrants came to the United States, mostly from Europe. The table below shows where those immigrants came from. Look at the table and follow the instructions below. And it says England was 16, from country of origin, England, percent of immigrants from 1840 to 1860. So we got England, 16%, Germany, 27%. Ireland, 40%, other countries, 17%. We're going to complete the text here. It said between 1840 and 1860, more immigrants came to the U.S. from Ireland than from any other place. The second largest group of immigrants came from, looks like Germany it's at 27. We got it. Did non-Europeans come to the United States during the 1800s? Yes, of course they did. Although Europe was the most common source of immigrants during this period, immigrants from other parts of the world also came to the United States. For example, the discovery of gold in, eight, in California in 1848 led to immigration from countries such as Ch China, Japan, Chile, and what was then the Kingdom of Hawaii. And we have the picture here showing the Chinese immigrants mining for gold. Between the years 1840 and 1860, over 1 1.7 million Irish immigrants came to the United States. Many immigrants left Ireland because of the Great Irish Potato Famine. A famine is an extreme shortage of food. Below are two sources that describe the Great Irish Famine. The first source is from a song written in the decades before after the Great Irish Famine. The second source is adapted from a book written by a historian of Irish immigration. Read the passages, then answer the question below. A song written in the late 1800s. 1848, I saw fathers, boys, and girls with rosy cheeks and silken curls, all a-missing and starving for a mouthful of food to eat. And that a-missing means dying. Kirby Miller, historian, from the summer of 1845 through the early 1850, every harvest of potatoes, practically the only food for most of Ireland's inhabitants, failed totally, resulting in perhaps a million deaths. Which of the following conclusions would be supported by both of the passages? During the famine, most Irish, Irish farmers were able to save their potato crop. That's clearly not true. The famine lasted only one year, no, 1845 to 1850. During the famine, many Irish people starved to death. The famine led Great Britain taking over England, Ireland? No. We got it. What caused the Great Irish Famine? The Great Irish Famine is also known as the Potato Famine. In the 1840s, potato crops across Europe were hit with a blight or disease. This blight caused potato plants to rot before they could be uh, harvested. Since potatoes were a cheap source of food, many poor Irish people depended on them to survive. Once potato crops failed, many Irish people starved to death. It shows a picture here of the potato with the rot a and a memorial about the famine of the Irish city of Dublin. It shows men, women, and children suffering because of the famine. Germans were the second most common immigrant group to come to the United States during the antebellum period. At the time, Germany was not one country. Instead, Germany was divided into dozens of independent states. And when they say states like this, they mean countries. Imagine you're a historian studying why people in the German states would want to come to the United States. Match each reason for leaving with the source that would be most useful for understanding that reason. 
So we've got bad harvest caused hardships for many German farmers. All right. So I'm looking for something about bad harvest. So agriculture reports about crops grown in German states. That would show us about the hardships for German farmers. German, some Germans tried to overthrow their governments in 1848, but failed. They left to avoid punishment. All right. They didn't want to get in trouble. Government records from German states sentencing rebels to prison or death. They were pretty harsh on the people that tried to overthrow the government, and I can understand why. Some German workers started earning less money, so they looked for places with better pay. A letter from a German craftsman to relatives in the United States asking what their wages are. All right, and one thing about this, these all look like push factors. A lot of problems in Germany pushing people out. They wanted to stay there, but from rebels to immigrants. In the 1800s, most German states were ruled, ruled by princes or kings. In 1848, rebels tried to overthrow the governments in many of these states. German rebels believed that the German states should become republic, republics with elected representatives. They saw what had happened in the United States. They saw what happened in France, and they wanted to try and duplicate that for Germany. Many German rebels also wanted Germany to become one united country. They all speak the same language. They should be one country. Within a year, the German states had defeated these rebellions. Many of the defeated rebels decided to come to the United States to avoid punishment. They were excited to move to a country that was already a republic. Many of them became leaders of German-American communities. Because of the roles in the Revolution of 1848, these immigrants were called 1848ers. German and Irish immigrants had many different motivations for coming to the United States. Scholars use the term push factors and pull factors to describe the motivations of immigrants. A push factor is a negative reason for leaving a country. A pull factor is a positive reason that encourages someone to come to a new country. For example, the Great Irish Famine was a push factor since the resulting starvation forced many people to leave Ireland. On the other hand, the possibility of earning money in the United States was a pull factor for many immigrants. The possibility of more money encouraged immigrants to move to a new country. Decided the immigrants below are describing push or pull factors. So this first fellow, I live in a German city. I hear the cities in the United States have lots of jobs. I hope that I can find one. He's being pulled in the United States, Sydney. I'm being forced to join the, join the army in a German state. I want to escape quickly. He's being pushed away from his home. I am a farmer in Ireland. I've heard that there is good farmland in the United States, so I'm moving there. He's being pulled to the United States. We got it. Why do immigrants come to the United States today? Immigrants today move to the United States for many different reasons. Some immigrate, immigrate, now look at that, immigrate with an E because of push factors such as civil war or famine. Others come to the United States to attend college or work for a new job. What unites immigrants with an I is that they come to the United States looking for a better life. Okay, and that whole thing with the immigrate with an E and immigrate with an I, that's a big important uh, distinction there. One means you're not going home. That's the immigrate with an I. And emigrate meet with an E means um, you will go back if things get better. And we got this picture here. It shows the Willis Tower. It used to be called the Sears Tower when I was your age. Designed by immigrant from Bangladesh named Fazlur Rahman Khan. Khan came to the United States to study engineering. Good schools are an example of a pull factor. All right. Well, there we go. Let's hope this worked this time. Uh, I'll post this and we'll see how it goes.